Stage complete. Loading. Stage 2. Level 1. Altair. Observer. A rumble. Through the expanse of the medium, the aftershocks of an explosion breach your audio inputs. The dense canopies of Lotas dampen the impact, but you can sense it nonetheless. Your mind whirs. You adjust your plans accordingly. Altair excurs. Now, if you plotted your course correctly, the gate to Loka should be just up ahead. You're certain there must be a more efficient means of transportation, but this will do for now. Your attempt at gate distribution was admittedly rather haphazard, but interplanetary travel is an absolute must for your directive, and you're confident in your ability to recall the path. It remains to be seen how the players will handle it, you suppose. Monitor. The interloper makes his rounds. You watch with keen interest. While the arc agent is away, you've been assigned his cubicle of fenestrated walls. As you arrive, you are quite surprised to find that the mysterious figure had left his base of operations and begun roaming around the incivisphere. With everything else going on, you doubt it's anything worth making a fuss over. Strange beings from beyond the veil are almost certainly beyond your jurisdiction, but you'll keep an eye on this one, just in case. At the moment, however, you're far more concerned with the mass simultaneous entry. There's going to be a lot of paperwork for this one. Luke, settle. The air falls heavy on your lungs. Your throat is feeling very dry. You're very happy to not be dead. Luke, level up. You find yourself moving up your echelader from man of war to horse theorist. Unfortunately, you lost your boon cap with Galpsby's birth certificate years ago, and your boon dollars are being filtered into a fixed term ISA, rendering the entire process meaningless. You guess you can appreciate the symbolism, though. Apparently Nick is a floating red ghost guy now. That's cool. He looks kind of slimy. It seems like he wants to talk to you. Luke, inquire. Bitch, look who's finally up. Uh, are you covered in tomato sauce? Hi. <laughs> How nice of you to notice. Is there a reason for that? At all. Welcome to suburb, dipshit. Well, the place isn't suburb. You're in the medium. Specifically the land of sand and ash. But you get the picture. I really don't. I know. Okay. Pause for a second. I know you know shit all about this place, because you just got here, and you wouldn't reasonably be expected to. But if you think I'm about to dive into some long-ass explanation about the mechanics of this game, you're wrong. Not only because info dumps are my least favorite thing ever, but also because there's a bunch of shit that I'm pretty sure I should know, but don't for some reason. And it's kind of pissing me off. Everything you just said was entirely lost on me. Why don't you consult your damn useful rolling device about it then? Probably more helpful than whatever I can tell you. Okay, look. If you're gonna be all pretentious about whatever ancient ancestor of ghost wisdom you have now, that's fine by me. But unless you give me something to work with, this game is actually going to kill me. Alright, fine. I'm a sprite, which is like your guardian angel watchdog dude. The game pumped my brain with all sorts of information, but left out all the relevant stuff. That will be actually helpful. So I'm stuck with the bare minimum kitty shit spark nose version. Chock full of stuff any moron can figure out in five minutes. Well, why don't you tell me what you know and we can work from there? That's the thing! I am actually physically incapable of filling you in on a large majority of my intel. And the stuff that I would be allowed to tell you isn't like a blind spot, where it's too fuzzy to make out. I can pick up some scraps. Scraps? Like, 
I'm vaguely aware that the gates are gone to high hell, and that the NPCs are fucked to shit. That other such awful occurrences are popping up left and right. But for whatever reason, the game took a fat deuce in my sprite knowledge pool, and half of it is just incomprehensible bullshit now. Okay, slow down. We've been here for less than five minutes. Just take a deep breath and relax. Are you serious? You haven't moved from that spot since we got here. It's definitely been more than five minutes. A lot more than five minutes, jeez. You really spaced out there. Did I seriously have another episode? I think you need to see a doctor about that. I think you need to see a doctor about a lot of things. Dude, are you hyperventilating? It's a breathing exercise. Whatever, dude. Just go look outside. Uh, looks like a bunch of sand. Am I missing something here? No. Uh, how are the lights still on, then? Oh my god, enough with the back and forth. Got a question for you now. Shoot. Where the hell are my shoes? Did I absorb them? Are they, like, sticking out my body somewhere? Or maybe they got sucked up into Sprite Purgatory with the rest of my lower body. Which isn't really an actual place, but I'd like to think my legs were just chilling somewhere. Anyway, those shoes cost a month's allowance, and my mom's gonna flip if they're gone. I think the whole sauce for blood thing is kind of a bigger deal. Doesn't that hurt? Not really. The colonel just considered me and the pizza to be a singular entity and sort of combined us because apparently the pizza has more defined characteristics than me or some bullshit like that. To be honest, I don't fully understand how prototyping actually works. Aren't you supposed to be an expert on that kind of thing now, with the fact brain and all? You think so, but there are like a billion special rules and exceptions for this stuff. Because you wouldn't believe the kind of shit people throw into kernels. Fucking idiots. Anyway, somebody is messaging you. Go answer it. Oh, right. Yeah. Messages. That's a normal thing that happens in the normal world. Luke, answer. Hello there, Wade. I trust you're adjusting well to the transition. I think I'm getting a stress rash. That was a bit too much information. But it's good to know your body is functioning as normal. Anyway, I don't mean to pressure you into anything, but I feel it would be best to establish communications among our little group as soon as possible, and I don't think I could do it alone. By my count, 16 users of the sub have successfully completed the first objective of the game and made it to the stage wrong currently. I've already contacted seven of them, and I'm in the process of arranging a formal meeting. However, I'm worried that inviting any more players would lessen the intimacy of the gathering. That's where you come in. Hold the fucking phone. How could you have possibly done all of this already? What can I say? I work well under pressure. Regardless, I've seen you work in a sub, and I'm impressed with your management skills. I was a mod for a month, and then I got booted for inactivity. A fine example of restraint. Exactly what we could use in a leader. Just tell me what you're after. I want you to contact the remaining players and make sure they're doing alright. That's it? Just talk to them? Exactly. You've got the whole in-person meeting thing going on. Should I do something like that? Oh, I don't think that's necessary quite yet. Just talking to them will suffice for now. Whatever you say. Oh, excellent. Though, I do have a word of advice. Uh, yeah? Cloak, you'll soon meet you, accusatory typer. A close friend of mine. She's not exactly a social butterfly, but she's very capable when it comes to solving abstract problems. If you wish to do well in this game, I'd heavily recommend you seek her advice. I'll keep that in mind, I guess. Anything else? That's all for now. I've sent the contact information for the remaining players, so you can talk to them on your own terms. I see you already know a few of them, which will hopefully speed up the process. I'll contact you after a while to see how things are going. Good luck, pal! Well, here we are. Discussion number one of what I can only assume will be many discussions to come. Here's the lowdown. There are 16 of us playing this game total, and Dagwin and I have agreed to break us up into two groups. It's probably for the best that we split, because otherwise we'd probably just be screaming over each other like assholes. So, let's get straight down to business. First topic for discussion. What the fuck just went down, and what exactly did you do to your shitty plastic toy to teleport you into this hellish dimension? 
And to prevent the aforementioned screaming like assholes situation, we're going to go in alphabetical order, based on username. It's okay to speak out of order if you have a relevant comment, but if you spam the chat, I'm kicking you. That means you, Sly. Before we start, I'm going to take attendance because God forbid we lose someone within the first 20 minutes. If you're here, say here and nothing else. Here. Here. Present. Uh, I mean, here. Roger. Here and nothing else. Here. 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 Shit, did I add you to this? Whatever, just keep quiet and let the humans talk. Racist. First up is you slash accusatory typer. There isn't much to tell. The game challenged my inhibitions. I overcame them. Could you be more specific? There were trinkets in the shape of books. Burning them was almost trivial. They were mere replicas. I believe it was symbolic. I think I know what you mean. Mine was really similar. Hold on a second. Accusatory typer, are you done or do we have an asshole? Carry on. First of all, rude. You said that we could talk out of order if we had something important to say. Also, can you tone down the swearing? It's making me kind of anxious. Sorry, force of habit. It's all right. Before we get into my story, I'd like to thank Evan for showing me how to work the punch machine. He even lent me a code for one of these adorable fluffy bunnies his church mom gave him. I love it so much. Oh, that's no big deal. I'm just glad to know you're getting so much joy out of it. Besides, it was good practice for figuring out the rules of these machines. They're actually not that complicated once you get the hang of it. Stay on topic, please. We can discuss strategy later. Sorry, I guess I'll talk about my item. This might sound kind of freaky, but it was me. But not in a, I have come back from the future to stab myself and prevent a war kind of way. Well, kind of like that, but not really. It was a super detailed plastic mold of me, like scarily accurate. It was like my sister's. Mannequins. But somehow even more unnerving. Mannequins? That's the story for another time. Anyway, it wasn't just one of them. The statues, I mean. There were a bunch of them. All over my room. So my first instinct was to grab some arrows and defend my territory. Like any sane person would do. You just have arrows lying around. Yeah, I'm an archer. I guess I'm lucky that I figured out what to do. Aren't we all? It was just sort of my natural reaction at the time. Does that say something about me? Okay, I don't mean to butt in again, but please can we talk about what we put in the glow circles? Crocs try sorry is a fun and all, especially mine, but it seems like we're ignoring a major part of the game. Did anybody else split into three parts and fly off? I honestly don't want to think about them right now. They're pretty much the worst thing about this game, and I've got a glowing pizza powder vouch for that. Oh, I'm allowed to speak now. Knock yourself out. Can confirm. Being a sprite sucks. If I could tell you half of the hokey nonsense you'll see in this game, it would blow your fleshy little minds. I almost want to tell you guys to give up while you still have the chance. But my infallible sprite intuition is saying, don't do that. So, uh... Keep doing what you're doing. Great input as usual. Anyway, we're sticking with the topic of Cruxite for now. If you mention your orb again, I won't ban you, but I'll silently judge you until you stop. It's not an orb. It's called a kernel. We went over this. 83D3, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. I really, really want to talk about my sprite, but I can hold off if we're not doing that right now. Thanks for humoring me. Up next is Brother Grapefruit. You guys can just call me Anton. The whole username thing is kind of impersonal. Anyway, the artifact. It was a pencil. I broke it. Probably has something to do with the fact that I don't really like my art. But that's only the obvious answer. It could be some unexplained phenomenon that's entirely unrelated to my hobby. I'm not really in position to say for sure. But because my story was so boring, I'm going to bring up something that some of you have probably noticed. The fact that a lot of you know each other. This is veering way off topic, but you have a point. I'm not feeling particularly moderately right now, so I'm going to let you continue. Appreciate it. 
As I was saying, it's really unlikely that there would be so many mutual relationships in a supposedly random sampling of the PS2 subreddit. I spoke with Accusatory Typer just a short while ago, and I've had encounters with a number of you in the past, though I don't recall many of them being particularly pleasant. Just from seeing you guys interact, it's clear that a few of you are close friends. I personally have a lot of friends in the PS2 community. I don't think it's weird that people with similar interests end up playing the same game. Ugh, so many reds and browns. Sudden has, like, the entire visible spectrum, you know. Yeah, can you please change your text color while we're talking? Uh, sorry about that. Much better. While I understand what you're saying, this isn't just about casual online hangouts. I'm talking close interpersonal relationships. I see what you mean. I know both Sly and Spade, but not in real life, considering they're in different countries. Or were in different countries, I guess. Yep. Nick doesn't count because I brought him with me. Uh, anyone else? I know Joshi, but I haven't talked to him since I got here. I hope he's doing okay. Doc would Oh. Well. We're researching. How's that turning out? Escape. I don't know necrophysics too well, but I'm hoping that'll change pretty soon. I guess that is kind of strange. Not really my main concern, though. Let's get back to the baubles. Artifacts. I'm up next. That you are. Would you believe me if I told you I got a whale? Like, an entire whale. I could tell you all sorts of interesting tidbits about the biblical significance, but you guys probably aren't too interested in that. Biblical significance, you say? Yep. It fell from the sky and broke a bunch of the pews. Being the savvy Bible gamer that I am, I went to town with my shovel for all the sweet loot. Turns out there was nothing in there but plastic whale guts. But, as luck would have it, that was what I needed to do anyway, so everything worked out in the end. That's usually how things work in general. I feel kinda bad for that poor whale. You know these things aren't real, right? It's like if you made a mold of a whale and then poured fake oranges into that mold and let it harden for three days. Except less real than that. Even my shitty Mobius strip was more real than that whale, and that's saying something. Because it was pretty goddamn fake. Knock it off, Sly. Oh, it's alright, I'm done with my story. I'd love to dance around the topic of my new planet and drop some vague hints about it, but I can't even see out the window. I did get an interesting pick from Necro, though. Silly goose held the camera upside down. Let's keep what the other group is doing separate for now. Next up is Severk and Evans. Nice. I'm glad none of you have pulled out any crazy spectacular stories because I'm totally gonna hype mine up. Dude, I am like the essence of hype right now, getting ready for your intense quest. My pulse is in the quadruple digits. Wait, can you just ban him already? I wish. <clears throat> I'd love to regale you all with stories of the fantastic wonderland outside my door. But I can't leave my room for various reasons that aren't relevant to the conversation, and I wasn't blessed with windows like the majority of people that exist. I feel you, man. Living in a basement sucks. <laughs> See? He understands my plight. Anyway, that entry minigame thing was probably the coolest thing that's ever happened to me, so I'm 100% ready to talk about it. You know that scene in Berserk where they have to fight a bunch of plants? It was like that, but twice as deadly. And I was twice as almost dead. People say that my katana isn't cool, but they didn't see me slicing and dicing like there was no tomorrow. I was an actual human weed whacker back there. It was herbicide in every sense of the word. Of course, that all turned out to be completely pointless, and I had to enter the Zen Buddhist state to activate my item. After I used my samurai training and breathing exercises, the creepy plant tentacles receded back into this little bonsai tree and then vanished. And now, according to you guys, I'm an entirely new universe, but it's not like I can use my eyes to confirm that or anything. Didn't you say your chill biker uncle is there with you? Just scream until he lets you out. I'd imagine he's here somewhere. Doesn't matter, though. All his engine work made him half deaf. He wouldn't hear me through a bullhorn. But yeah, that's my tale. It was cooler in real life than the way I described it. I'm sure it was. So if you think yours is better, remember that fact. Alright, fuckers. It's Sly time. No, it's not. Spade comes before Spartan in the alphabet. Dude, those are like the same exact letters. Nobody can even tell the difference. And I'm not about to let some friend stealing loser go before me. Sly, we've talked before. We're in game chat together. I knew you before I knew Wade. 
No, there's no excuse for your actions. You have to face the consequences, and the consequences are me stealing your turn in the talking game. Because Wade won't let us talk about anything interesting and all the blabbering about Crookseed is seriously killing the vibe. So I'm gonna give it to you straight. I put a tech deck in my orb. I don't even regret it. This thumb dude is bad as hell. And I'd much rather talk to him than stay in this snooze fest. But I'm a good listener and also a compassionate person in general. And it is my moral obligation to stay here and listen to you guys ramble about your adventures. So I'm gonna do exactly that. Spitfire round. Everyone needs one word to describe your planet thing. Smog. Oriental? Rigid. No fucking idea! It's hard to see anything here, really. Since the man of the hour hasn't even been outside, I'll answer for him. Dusty. Well, how about I just reveal that I have the best one? Because it's literally just food products. How's that for cultivating discussion, Wade? Spade, you're up next. Gee, that's a tough act to follow. He did bring up an interesting topic, though. I think at this point, some of us are just stalling. Which makes sense, because our houses are probably the safest places in this entire dimension. But despite that, I encourage you guys to actually go out and explore. My sprite wanted me out of the house before I could even comprehend where I was, and I've been having an excellent time so far. It's just a matter of avoiding the bigger dudes and sticking to the safe areas, and the spirals make travel super easy. Wait, you actually left your house? With no plan and no guarantee you'll make it back alive. I mean... When you put it like that, it sounds reckless, but I'm just rolling with the punches. Has anybody else done this? Haven't gone far. Cat is keeping me safe. I just wanted to get away from my sprite. Didn't work. Are they supposed to follow you out? You know what? Just don't even bother with basic safety concerns. Obviously, the first thing you should do in an unfamiliar territory is head off in a random direction. They don't teach you this stuff in Scout, folks. Whatever, it's not my problem. Gotta take initiative sometimes, Wade. Anyway, I'm going to try and speak with everyone here one-on-one -on -one at some point. Group chats are a lot of fun, but I'm not sure they're all that productive. It's an interesting concern. PM me when you can, you can. I'll see what I can do. But, yeah, turn over. That just leaves me. Because people seem to be incredibly impatient today, I'll try to keep this brief. My object wasn't meant to be destroyed like the others. Neither was mine. Okay, I'll give you that, but I didn't destroy it in the traditional sense. I'm pretty sure the game tried to signal out my innate curiosity, and then correct it? Which not only is really fucking creepy and invasive, but also tells me that the game is probably reading my mind. I'm all for immersive gaming, but this is a bit outside my comfort zone. I actually agree with you on this. I don't think I'm well prepared for this game at all. It's still too early to tell what exactly we've got in store for us, and I'm still trying to get over the initial shock of being on an alien planet including all the weird creatures on it. Especially the one that's following me around. This might sound weird, but can I ask you guys not to contact me for a while? It's going to take me some time to adjust to this. No problem! I'm around any time if you need somebody to talk to. Ditto. Uh, I mean, ditto. Seeing that the conversation is wrapping up, I wanted to thank you guys for staying mostly civil. Or at least trying to. Like Brother Grapefruit said, we don't know what the game has in store, so we're gonna have to stick together to figure it out. I plan to touch base with the other group pretty soon, but Dagwood has plans for some kind of expedition, and I don't want to get involved with any of that crazy shit just yet. Sorry, force of habit. Unless anyone has any closing remarks, that brings the first discussion thread to a close. Stay safe, everyone!